intensifying conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan is dividing NATO allies. The clashes over the region of Nagorno-Karabakh have been the fiercest since the middle 1990s. Fears are growing of a regional war that might draw in Russia and Turkey. We're going to talk in depth about what's going on over there with Ambassador Meher Margaryan, um, Armenia's permanent representative to the United Nations here in New York. Thank you so much for joining us, Ambassador. I really appreciate you doing this. Uh, today um, and in the past couple of days, France uh, has been sparring uh, with Turkey over the clashes. President uh, Macron has sent a very clear message to Turkey that these warlike messages are not going to be accepted by France. At the same time, we see Russia as well um, pointing to the foreign interference and, and Reuters just reported that Turkey is sending foreign fighters to fight um, in the Nagorno-Karabakh. How concerned are you from foreign interference and outside forces slowly taking part in what's happening right now? Well, thank you for, thank you for this opportunity uh, uh, to, to share our position here. Um, we are very concerned about the involvement of the foreign fighters uh, in, in the conflict zone. As you rightly have mentioned already, uh, there are many credible reports pointing out uh, to the involvement of the foreign terrorist fighters and mercenaries and there have been calls from the side of the international community and also for, from the Minsk Group co-chairs to make sure that uh, these uh, foreign mercenaries, which are actually being recruited and um, transported with the support and encouragement of Turkey, and we have to name the names here, uh, and the, they have been a very destructive element in, 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 in this conflict and uh, need to be uh, encouraged to stop their activities and transportation of these foreign terrorist fighters into the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict zone. Ambassador, a lot has been said about the timing of the eruption or if we can say re-eruption of this conflict. But what can you tell us about the timing? Why now? Uh, you know, the, the, these belligerent actions uh, of Azerbaijan have been preceded by many years of dangerous rhetoric of hate speech and armenophobia openly and consistently promulgated by Azerbaijan at the very highest political level. The leadership of Azerbaijan has been promoting hate crimes and glorifying hate criminals. At the same time, they have been spending billions of dollars uh, to acquire deadly offensive weaponry and openly threatening the people of Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh with promises to use force. Uh, so it comes as no surprise uh, that the NRB followed the, the statement made by the Azerbaijani leader uh, just last week at the General Assembly of the United Nations. Um, it was not only a textbook manifestation of a hate speech, but also uh, what we come to realize now, in a way, a declaration of war against the people of Nagorno-Karabakh uh, with a clear genocidal intent. The, the offensive also comes amidst a global crisis caused by COVID-19 pandemic. Well, when the international community is focused on fighting disease, obviously, uh, one would think that Azerbaijan has decided to take advantage of these global vulnerabilities caused by pandemic also in light of internal instabilities that they are ex experiencing. So this is not uh, just an attack against Armenians, but this is also uh, an attack against the basic norms of humanity, again, an attack against what the United Nations stands for. Speaking of the United Nations, Secretary General uh, Guterres called of course, for the cessation of all hostilities and for all the parties to come together to the negotiating table. Of course, both Azerbaijan and Armenia refused to come back to the negotiations. What can you tell us about that? What will it take to um, sit down and negotiate? And is that a possibility to start with? Well, Armenia, Armenia never refused uh, uh, to, to sit for peaceful negotiations. We have been 
uh, on record of encouraging the participation also of the representatives of the elected authorities of Nagorno-Karabakh to sit down with, with Azerbaijan to have a peaceful talks. But you refer to yeah, Asia's encouragement and call for the immediate uh, return to negotiations. Uh, the Secretary General indeed called for immediate return and to stop fighting and de-escalate tensions. But it doesn't seem to be the intention of Azerbaijan to follow that call. Because we also have to bear in mind that uh, the Secretary General made an appeal for global ceasefire calling for pulling back to hostilities at the time of the, uh, at the early beginning period of COVID-19 pandemic back in March, he was calling for pulling back from the hostilities, silencing guns and stopping art artillery and uh, ending airstrikes. Um, well, Armenia uh, strongly supported the Secretary General's appeal and was among the uh, more than 170 countries uh, supporting it. And apparently Azerbaijan, and not only refused to unconditionally support the Secretary General's appeal, but also resorted uh, to large-scale military aggression. What is the role of the Minsk Group today and the circumstances we're living in? Um, is it still capable of containing the dispute? Do you expect the members of the group, France, US, Russia, to overcome maybe their differences uh, over uh, you know, other conflicts? and? maybe rally behind Armenia? What do you expect from this group? Well, the, the Minsk Group co-chairmanship remains the only internationally mandated format uh, to mediate uh, the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. And when it comes to the conflict, uh, the, the co-chair countries, uh, they have expressed on several occasions the, their unified position. Uh, uh, on the uh, on the principles of the resolution of the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, and they have made it clear that the hostilities need to stop. And recently, if you have also followed uh, the recent statements, the co-chair countries also called for the uh, external actors and uh, uh, and foreign terrorist fighters to to be to be re removed from the conflict zone. And uh, I believe it is. Yeah, uh, who is the addressee here. What do you think Turkey really wants in all of this? And what's your message to the international community on how uh, Yerevan expects the world to deal with Turkey right now? Uh, well, uh, it's, uh, uh, we see the, the, the Turkish involvement uh, as uh, as another attempt of exporting instability to the, to our region, we have been observing increasing uh, engagement of uh, Turkish uh, military in in the, in the in the conflict zone, uh, and uh, this is something that needs to be condemned uh, by the international community. Uh, the the destabilizing record of Turkey be it in the Eastern Mediterranean, in the Middle East, is, is well known to the world. How much of this is about the importance of the, uh, the strategic importance of the region being a corridor for oil pipelines that distribute oil to the world markets all over the world? Uh, how much of it do you think has to do with that important fact? Uh, well, yeah, uh, uh, the, 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 the situation, if, uh, if Azerbaijan and Turkey are not contained, may, may lead to very, very dangerous uh, escalation and the consequences uh, can, be devastate, can have devastating impact on the uh, entire region and beyond. So uh, Azerbaijan and Turkey must, must come to their senses and hinge to the calls of the international community, including the recent calls by the, by the UN Secretary General, and also bearing in mind of the yesterday's UN Security Council uh, uh, outcome uh, to the press, uh, and needs to commit uh, uh, to peace in good faith. 
the consequences you mentioned. Everyone is worried about the possible consequences. Can you tell us what they might be in a little bit more detail, the consequences? Well, the, the, uh, as I said, we are already observing uh, the, uh, uh, the, milit the growing military uh, actions uh, and uh, with, with the reports that, that are uh, coming also with the involvement of hundreds or thousands uh, of the foreign terrorist fighters, uh, it, 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 it can lead, as I already mentioned, to the to the very destabilizing uh, not only destabilizing effect not only in our region but well uh, beyond it so uh, I would repeat uh, by saying that the international community uh, should uh, send a stronger message uh, to those uh, engaged uh, from the outside encouraging Azerbaijan uh, and to Azerbaijan itself to come to senses and hold uh, the, the military aggression. Talk a little bit about Karabakh, Ambassador. How do Armenians feel about uh, the conflict in that region that has consumed decades of their lives and cost thousands of lives, actually, and the displacement of many? Um, uh, what's the presence? Tell us a little bit about the presence and the consciousness of Armenians and the importance of this region. Uh, well, Nagorno-Karabakh Nagorno people have uh, exercised their right to self-determination back in uh, 1991. Uh, and they have all the right to live in their ancestor uh, historical land without fear or foreign coercion. And um, you know, the, the, at, at the core of the issue is the, the right to self-determination, which is also enshrined in the in the UN Charter, uh, and they have exercised this uh, this right uh, by way of referendum uh, back in December 1999, in accordance with uh, applicable in, uh, Soviet laws of the time and also uh, international law. So Ar Armenia, uh, uh, as a as a guarantor of the uh, security of the people of Nagorno-Karabakh, will take every measures to defend their inalienable rights. And, and Armenians around the world, uh, the, 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 they are very strongly united on this matter because uh, we, we cannot, we as Armenians cannot allow another genocide to be perpetrated against the Armenian population in course of this Azerbaijani military aggression encouraged and supported by Turkey. What about the United States? The United States has not prioritized the Nagorno-Karabakh since 2001, I believe. Um, do you expect, do you maybe issue a call now for Americans to take a more active role? Um, well, the, uh, the, the United States uh, is one of the co-chairs of, of the MIS group uh, and we very much uh, appreciate their role and engagement along with Russia and France and the United States has been vocal on the recent escalation, calling for immediate cessation of hostilities and discouraging external actors from getting involved in this conflict. Um, and uh, we would uh, very much uh, wish to, to see a stronger uh, engagement together with the other co-chairs uh, of the MIS group. Uh, Do you see that now the region being what it is right now with all the conflict in the Eastern Mediterranean, uh, the conflict with Iran, whom uh, your prime minister talked with the president today of Iran, uh, do you think all of that might be an incentive for the United States to actually um, move the Nagorno-Karabakh up its priorities uh, now? List of priorities. Well, well, we hope it is in the list of priorities, and we hope <clears throat> that, as I repeat, in, in, in case of the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, uh, the, the co-chair countries will continue to have a unified, uh, uh, cohesive uh, position uh, uh, as to the principles of the resolution of the conflict.
I have a question. Who wants this conflict to escalate, Ambassador? Who's benefiting from this conflict? Well, uh, it's, it's hard to say who would benefit from this conflict, but apparently who instigated uh, this conflict and who started this conflict is very well known uh, now, not only to the expert community and not only to us who deal with the mediating of the conflict, but uh, to, 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 the, to the larger uh, international uh, society as well. Because uh, uh, as I was trying to, uh, to say in the beginning, uh, we have been observing years of accumulation of uh, military equipment and weaponry of an offensive nature by, by, by uh, Azerbaijan. We have been observing uh, the escalation of hate speech and hate instigation of hatred uh, against uh, Armenians, not only those uh, who live in, in Nagorno-Karabakh or Armenian province, but Armenians in general all over the world. And those are very well documented facts that have been also strongly criticized by the international human rights organizations. And, and it's no, uh, no surprise that in, in his uh, address to the General Assembly, uh, the Azeri president uh, singled out several prominent uh, international human rights organizations uh, by way of uh, uh, criticizing uh, uh, their, their record in, in, uh, in condemning uh, the uh, human rights violations in that country. Finally, can you send a very direct message to the Azeri president? I'm just... Uh, well, uh, the me message to the Azeri president, in fact, was uh, uh, sent uh, several times by the Prime Minister of Armenia, Nikol Pashinya, when, uh, when uh, he made it very clear from the uh, early days uh, uh, of becoming uh, leader of Armenia that uh, any solution to this long-standing conflict uh, must be acceptable uh, to the people of Armenia, to the people of Nagorno-Karabakh and uh, to the people of Azerbaijan. And uh, he, he was also clear in mentioning that it should be without prejudice to the order uh, uh, of uh, uh, which people are concerned here. This has been very strong and important message, uh, which was not only uh, uh, not reciprocated by Azerbaijani uh, side, uh, but, but instead, uh, uh, the, the recent uh, instigation of uh, violence uh, by the leadership of that country uh, gives us uh, no any assurances that uh, uh, they are able to uh, to to reciprocate uh, such a call. So the the, the message the message uh, has been uh, expressed clearly and loudly by, by, by the Prime Minister of Armenia, which is unfortunately, which has not been reciprocated. And uh, this recent uh, reckless uh, attack and aggression against the uh, Nagorno-Karabakh um, uh, leaves us uh, with, uh, with, with no much hope that uh, it will be reciprocated anytime soon. So do you think in the end, the fears that we started the introduction with, the fears of a war that would draw in external forces and other countries is real, do you think? Uh, where do you see this conflict going? The fears of what I, I think the, I was... The conflict growing into a war that would draw other countries into it. Are we really scared of, uh, are we talking about the possible all out war here? Are there real fears you think of that? Well, uh, if, if they are not contained, as I said, if Azerbaijan and, uh, and, and their supporters uh, 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 are not contained, uh, uh, what we are observing now is already a, a large-scale escalation with the use of all the heavy weaponry in the, in the arsenal. So it, 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 it should come as no surprise that uh, if, uh, if the tensions 
keep growing and if the aggression continues, then it might have a, a dangerous spillover effect. So yeah. the international community should take all the means and we have, uh, we, we appreciate the Secretary General calls. We appreciate that the Security, uh, Security Council have, have sent a, a, a unified message uh, that the hostilities uh, should, uh, should stop uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the external, external actors uh, need to be withdrawn from the conflict zone. Thank you so much, Ambassador Margarian, um, Armenia's permanent representative to the United Nations. I appreciate so much you doing this, and I hope you have a great afternoon, and see you again soon. Thank you. All the best to you. Thank you.